Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Biohacking Beauty Podcast uh, with me, Amitai Eshel, uh, the co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the biohacking skincare company. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm very, very happy uh, you're here with me today. Today is going to be a solo episode. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the skin as a driver of overall aging in the body or whole body aging. Uh, we all know that when we age, our skin produces less collagen, elastin, leading to wrinkles, sagging, and general loss of firmness. These changes are primarily the result of, of the natural process of aging, including the accumulation of senescent cells where uh, the cell can no longer replicate or self-destruct uh, when needed because of the buildup of unrepaired DNA from normal cellular replication. What we're going to do in this podcast, we'll review senescent cells and why they play an essential role in aging. We'll also learn about factors that can accelerate senescence in our skin and in our body, such as environmental stressors and epigenetic. And finally, we're going to give you an insight into how how senescent cells affect overall aging and what you can do uh, in order to slow down this aging process or this contributor to aging. Before we dive into today's episode, it would mean the world to me and to us here in Young Goose and the Biohacking Beauty Podcast if you took two seconds out of your day to subscribe to the podcast. Um, not only does this ensure that you will never miss an episode, but it also uh, greatly helps the growth of this podcast, making sure that anyone that can derive use from this information will know about it and will have access to it. Uh, so it helps the algorithm. Uh, the last thing before we, we start talking about senescence and whole body aging and the skin, I want to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Young Goose Skincare, the world's first biohacking skincare company. And that's what we're doing here in, in Young Goose. We're looking at ways in which our skin ages from, from a, a, a genetic perspective, from a cellular perspective. And we're looking how, at how we affect these processes with topical products. And by affecting these processes, we can also improve how the skin looks today and tomorrow, but also can basically contribute to healthy and, and good looking skin also in the future, also in 5, 10, 20 years. That is our passion. And this podcast is a direct extension of that passion because we're, we're trying to exhibit or we're trying to talk about things that improve the overall, overall health of our body and therefore improve the skin health. Uh, but without further ado, let's begin. So what are senescent cells? Uh, senescent cells are cells that entered a state of irreversible uh, growth arrest. As these cells remain in a so-called zombie state, they stop contributing to the correct function of uh, the tissue they are proud of. So it, does, it doesn't have to be in the skin. It can be any tissue in the body. So basically cells have something called the Heiflich limit, which is the amount of times that they can split. So cells renew themselves by splitting, by creating offsprings of other cells. But when they do that, they sacrifice a uh, the ends of their DNA, something called telomeres. And when those telomeres basically run out, these cells do not split anymore. And if there is a mistake, they get into a senescent state. This state can cause inflammation, reduce tissue repair, and increase risk of certain diseases such as type 2 diabetes, arthritis, and cancer. A senescence is a protective process uh, that occurs to cells as they divide and replicate over and over and over again, as we said. This is not necessarily bad. It is a normal part of life where cells will hit a certain number of divisions, as we said, the Heiflich limit, before they can no longer replicate and their DNA breaks down if, if they would continue to replicate. You can think of telomeres as like the plastic on shoelaces. If that plastic breaks down, the shoelace can unwind and, and we'll have bigger problems. That is why this process is happening in the body. But again, as these cells build up, senescent cells build up, they stop functioning correctly and cause issues in our tissues. This buildup of senescent cells is one of the leading causes of aging. A little bit about senescence and the skin specifically, or the appearance of the skin. Senescent cells can be found nearly in any tissue and organ 
in our bodies. They are commonly found in areas that experience a lot of wear and tear, such as skin, joints, and arteries. And why is that? Is because we're creating more demand for repair because there is more damage, so cells split more. And if you uh, listen to me talk about any like cosmetic procedure, if, if I ever tell people that they should balance the amount of stimulation for repair that they're doing, that's what we're talking about. More demand for repair eventually accumulates more senescent cells. Um, senescent cells themselves can cause wrinkles by changing the collagen production in the skin. So more senescent cells uh, contributes to more dysfunction, which would ca- which would um, reduce uh, collagen production in the skin. The production of new collagen, the weaving of protein fibers in the dermis to give the skin its uh, strength, strength and elasticity is reduced in areas where senescent cells are present. And this type of collagen breakdown is associated with uh, formation of what we call anchor lines or deep wrinkles as they at the corner of the mouth, under the eyes, and at the base of the neck as well as other areas. How does external factors, so there is extrinsic and intrinsic aging in general in the skin, and about 80% of skin aging comes from external exposure to external factors. So senescent cells are not only associated with the loss of collagen in the skin, but also with damage uh, um, to other uh, other processes in the skin. And one of the major driver of senescence is you UV radiation. Not only UV, also high levels of artificial light that carry within it blue light with very high velocity and energy. They also cause uh, or or drive senescence. Pollution does, and also exposure to EMF because all of those factors increase oxidative stress in the skin uh, or free radicals in the skin, and those also drive damage, which would drive senescence. UV radiation damages the skin by causing damage to the DNA structure. This DNA damage can be both short and long, or the skin damage can be also short and long term. In the short term, uh, UV radiation can cause skin damage like sunburns, and it can also obviously contribute to skin cancer. But again, it causes our skin to need to sacrifice resources in order to repair itself, which obviously leads to uh, more senescence. But the long term uh, damage of UV is more uh, profound because it, it can lead to damage to DNA that is very hard to repair. This can uh, cause cells to enter into a state of accelerated senescence, and that would also contribute to wrinkles and loss of skin elasticity, and it actually uh, thins the skin out as well. These uh, senescent cells, when they when they accumulate, just to give you a little bit of an idea, they release cytokines, they release inflammatory factors, and they also attract immune cells to the area, which can cause negative effects. But it's not only the environment that leads to this accumulation. It is also intrinsic aging in the skin, which means aging that happens normally in the skin. Uh, So epigenetics play a factor here as well, because as you age, your gene will be expressed differently from the way that that they were uh, when you were younger. In some cases, or in some genes cases, or certain genes that are typically expressed at lower levels might may be expressed at higher levels, and vice versa. In other words, certain certain genes may be turned on and turned off at certain times in your life, which is basically mistakes that happen from lower sirtuin activity. And I urge you to go back and listen to the NAD uh, episode or the resveratrol episode where we talk about it more. This is referred to as epigenetics, which is changes in in gene expression that do not involve change in DNA sequence. So we are still who we are. The DNA is still arranged in the same way. But, you know, if we have a heart cell as opposed to a skin cell, different genes are being turned on and off to give the basically only the information that we need to, for that cell to function. So as we grow older, uh, genes that are supposed to be involved in, let's say, for as an example, in liver cell function are turned on to the skin and vice versa. Some genes that are responsible for proper skin function are turned off. As a great example, um, it is well known in, in studies that uh, genes that are responsible for regulating the amount of collagen in the skin naturally decrease 
as we age, obviously contributing to skin thinning and uh, wrinkling, etc. Not only in the face, but also in the hands, neck, and other parts of the body. But again, the more we're exposed to external factors, the more we're going to get it. And that's why it happens more in, in the face, back of the hands, etc. So how does skin senescence translate to whole body aging, which is really what uh, we wanted to talk about in this podcast or to kind of convey? So emergent research points to, the, to skin aging affecting the rest of the of the body. Interestingly, different studies suggest that the skin mirrors health status. Uh, for example, cardiovascular risk, mortality risk, and also longevity. Uh, senescent cells occur in the, in the skin with aging or from exposure to, to env- environmental factors, as we said. And as I said before, this accumulation or senescent cell accumulation releases inflammatory markers, which promotes dysfunction and senescence in nearby cells. That's why they're called zombie cells. Uh, they're called zombie cells also because they are, they are not functioning properly, but also because they kind of infect nearby cells. But it doesn't. So skin cells do not necessarily only infect nearby skin cells. It, they also in fact, other cells, cell types, such as immune cells, endothelial t- cells, which are cells that are existing in our blood vessels, and nervous cells, uh, which might contribute to immunosenescence and to a chronic low-grade inflammatory state in the body, which, uh, which is also called um, inflammaging. So it, it basically drives overall aging. Furthermore, skin stress can promote brain stress uh, responses and, dis- and, and dysfunction due to communication maintained via the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so hpa axis which has its which ha- has a component of it in the skin and that that allows the skin to communicate directly with the hypothalamus which is a uh, brain region with crucial roles in uh, which play plays a crucial role in systemic aging uh, so how can we delay whole body aging by eliminating senescent cells in the skin. What we love seeing uh, and we're extremely interested in here in, in Young Goose, emergent studies uh, and strategies to delayed aging include senescent cell elimination using something called senolytic. These are drugs that eliminate senescent cells and there are uh, a few different methods of doing it or do a few different pathways. A few supplements that people might uh, know that are senolytic are, for example, Fisetin, quercetin, permidine, um, they are all they, they all work a little bit differently, but they all showed great promise in eliminating senescent cells as a supplement. All of those studies show effective aging delay and reversal by lowering the burden of senescent cells. So if we reduce the amount of senescent cells in our body as a whole, we can affect how the body ages because this is a burden on the body as a whole. One of the uh, best ways to induce a senolytic effect is by inhibiting mTOR. We can do it but with rapamycin or uh, analogs, which one of them we're, by the way, using in our ProCare serum. So mTOR is a very interesting pathway. It is also, also called the abundance pathway. So it basically interacts with amino acids and measures in the abundant states that we are currently in. So if you know about the the anti-aging benefits of things like intermittent fasting, they most of those benefits are because of the interaction with mTOR. So what we are doing with ProCare, we have one of the rapamycin analogs which target the mTOR pathway, inhibiting it for a short amount of time and clearing some senescent cells. And what we've also shown in research is that it increases the function of 40 or the turns on 14 different genes that are associated or their decline is associated with aging in the skin. So things like, as we said, eight different collagen genes, elastin genes, hyaluronic acid genes, etc. cetera. Uh, so this is pretty interesting and we are very interested in it. But just to conclude what we said here, the skin is constantly under assault by envir- environmental aggressors. The skin is also aging from the inside. It also makes mistakes, but 80% of what skin aging is on, on average is 
environmental aggressors through the neuroendocrine system, the skin has a crucial role in sensing environmental signals and leading the body to react properly. So if the skin cannot sense, so if if there is a constant assault, we increase oxidative stress in the skin. We are marring, we're, we're damaging the skin's ability to orchestrate responses properly in the body, which uh, leads to exacerbates aging, and it it results in exponential senescent load over time. This overload can impact systemic aging by spreading inflammation, further senescence to other other uh, organs and tissues, and obviously increasing the senescent burden on the body. So we try to make it quick. This uh, episode can can be a whole series of of um, episodes about how the skin drives whole body aging. Just to conclude, something that we didn't talk about a lot is how the skin barrier also ages, also uh, gets affected by it. And the skin barrier's job is really to protect us from the environment, from those aggressors. So when it doesn't do its job so well these aggressors can penetrate more deeply into the body. If there is a breakdown of the skin barrier, then we don't only get like redness, flakiness, things like that, but we also get more oxidative stress and more inflammation permeating the body. That is why we created ProCare, which is our uh, senolytic serum. It also has some other amazing cutting edge uh, ingredients and effects that it, it creates in the skin. And we've published one study, we're going to publish another study on it, but we showed how it uh, inhibits mTOR, how it uh, reduces uh, senescent load, beautiful product, and definitely a product that people should use on a regular basis con- consistently. Just to remind you, if it's your first time uh, ordering from us, you can use the code podcast 20, and that would give you 20% off your first order. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this episode. Please let us know if you want us to maybe refine this message, or if you have any question about senescence and how the skin drives overall aging, because the idea of this episode was incentivize everyone. If they're interested in how their skin looks, or they're more interested in how they feel in the inside, we should all understand that our skin health and how our skin looks and operates affects us as an organism and that we should take care of our skin. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your day and week. 